Welcome to my uh, journey uh, into home backup. Uh, what I'm doing this this is a third video in this little series just to show what I've been what I'm doing um, trying to set up both a solar panel and also some electric uh, backup for some of the circuits in my house. And hopefully um, you can pick something up from what I'm doing. And I'll, the, so there's a, there's two shorter videos that precede this, and then there'll be more to come. So I'll catch you next time. A minute ago, this was in the bright sun, and it was getting just about one kilowatt, so almost 1,000 watts. The two panels together are rated at 1,100 in series. And uh, so in, in, a, in a perfect conditions, I'd probably get that. Um, I'm having some scattered clouds, so it goes in and out. But um, And I've got it tipped. I could bring it up just a little bit more, like another couple degrees. And then, of course, it's, I was looking at the shadow here and trying to keep it more or less aligned. But anyway, so I'm getting about about a thousand uh, watts when that's running. Now, what I've done, I'm now charging, this is a, uh, just a Kia Neuro PHEV plug-in hybrid. It's got a battery in it that's roughly, get my thumb out of the picture, it's roughly, uh, I can't remember, around nine kilowatt hours, I think. And these are, these are, this is a Delta Pro. Um, an EcoFlow Delta Pro, which has a 3.6 or 3.7 kilowatt hour battery, and then there's a smart um, extra battery plugged into it. So together, uh, we're a little over, a little over seven kilowatt hours probably. So together, these two units have slightly less power, less uh, capacity, battery capacity than the traction battery on the Kia. But I just went to, I just drove to uh, Silverdale and back, um, went to, made a Costco run, and I only used about, I probably used not quite 60% of the battery in that run. So I only need to charge about 60% of nine. So we'll see what happens. This is, these are, these units are almost full because of the solar. And the only thing I'm currently running off of them is, um, back in the mess there is a chest freezer which uses when it's running when the compressor's running it uses about 100 watts but the compressor doesn't run all the time i don't know if it runs half the time or something so over overnight it used um uh used less than 20 percent of the battery power of these two units probably like around 15 percent something like that overnight um okay so i've got i've got a kilowatt hour coming in i've got 1.4 kilowatt hours going out to the car, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. I'm at. Uh, move this cable out of the way. I've got 90, 98 percent on the main unit and 95 percent on the extra battery right now. When it runs, it tries to keep them roughly the same. It doesn't. It doesn't shift power back and forth because every time it has to move power around, there's a loss. You know, with the inverter and the cabling and everything, you lose some energy. So it tries to only it tries to keep them within about 10 percent or less of each other, but it doesn't worry about trying to make them exact. It won't sit there and shift power back and forth to balance it. Um, what else? Do I can, oh, so when I charge the Kia, I have I haven't done videos about this, but I have a a level two charger here. That's a charge point level two charger, and it uh, runs on uh, 240 240 volts. Here in the U.S., um, our houses are wired for 120, and if you want 240, you have to have a dual phase connection. And so I've got that here, and then of course in the house we have dual phase for things like the water, electric water heater, electric range, electric clothes dryer, or three that I can think of off the top of my head that use 240. Um, okay, so if I if I was to, if this was completely empty. Or down to it doesn't ever get completely empty, but if it was down to like 10% power, this would charge the Kia in about two and a half hours. Now, what I've got here, this is a uh, level one charger. It's running, it's running off of 120 volts. It's a level one charger, and this charger came to me. Uh, this came with the car. So this is a Kia brand uh, charger, and uh, it'll charge this car from say 10% to 100 in probably 
seven hours, seven and a half hours, something like that. So it would, it would charge it up overnight. But like I said, I don't have, assuming that I don't run out of battery power, this should charge um, in about four hours, I would think. Um, I, I did something else, and I don't know if I needed to, but I was watch, reading online, and it said if you're going to charge a car from a, a solar generator like this, you need to get a grounding plug. So I went to online and I bought, this is a, I've got plugged in here, this is a grounding plug. And the reason you need that is because the car won't start charging until it senses that you've got an adequate ground. Um, so I'm kind of fooling the car. The I don't think there's any danger of, of anything here because, um, <clears throat> you know, the the uh, generators are, are three wired and and uh, and everything is is uh, connected adequately. But uh, but you need to run you need to run that. So I've got that going, and this is the first time I've done this. So I'm just curious to see what happens. And it it's perfectly happy um, when it when it's flashing green like this. It just means that it's charging. And the Kia has the J1772 plugs, so it's a non-Tesla. I do have a Tesla adapter, so when the world goes Tesla adapter next, they call it, I'll, uh, I'll be able to continue. So the, um, this, says, this says five hours right now, remaining time. So we'll see. See what happens. So this is a screen print off of the uh, app, the Delta Pro, the EcoFlow app that comes with, uh, that you can download and connect your, your EcoFlow products. So this is connected to my, my Delta Pro number one. And uh, basically what it's saying, the input it says is 1.2 kilowatts. And what that is means is the main unit is getting, at the time I took the screen print, it was getting 962 watts from the solar panel and it was getting 245 watts from the extra battery it was shipping in some help and it was putting out 1.4 kilowatts and all of that was going to the car if the chest freezer had been running it would be a little bit higher than that and uh it's saying the guessometer says that it's got 10 hours of of charge available at this rate but of course um the sun isn't going to shine that brightly here for 10 hours so that would that wouldn't exactly happen but this is the ecoflow app or one 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 screen of it um and uh, they've got a pretty good app so if you want to if you want to know more about that you can you can look here on on youtube there's a bazillion uh, reviews of ecoflow products and detailed looks at them um so i'm not going to go into any more detail at that point right now but let's uh, let's step aside for a minute and look at some numbers for the solar panels. Here's a quick uh, quick fun with numbers <clears throat> for what I've got set up. The the formula that is important here is that uh, watts to calculate watts you take the number of volts times the amps and that'll give you watts. Now the Delta Pro, which is my um, solar generator has a maximum solar input of 1600 watts. If you feed it more than 1600 watts, it'll just accept 1600, it'll, it's a cutoff. It has a maximum solar input of 150 volts, and that's a hard number. You don't, you, I do not want to go over that number. Uh, too many volts will, over, will cause a problem, electrical problem, uh, maybe a, a short or a overload situation, or in a worst case, it could, destroy the unit I suppose and it also has a limit of 15 amps and if, uh, the, uh, if if there's more than 15 amps available it'll just take 15 it won't go it won't take more and that's not a that's not a problem to go over that it's just it's just wasted basically but it's not a not a situation the big the important number is this 150 okay so what I have is my first uh, array I went to I got Renogy. I've got uh, 550 watt panels is what they call them, and these are rated at a maximum of 50 volts and 14 amps. And I have two of them, and I've can put them in series. And when you when you put panels in series, you take and 
add the volts. So I now have 100 volts. And you take the smaller of the of the amps. And in this case, they're both the same because they're this, I got two identical panels. So it's 14 amps. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I have. And so uh, in theory, the, the, what you, what you see in the, in the advertisements <clears throat> is for panels is they give you a watt rating. And then what that is, that's under like laboratory conditions with a set amount of uh, light energy striking the panel at a perfect angle and a temperature of whatever it is, 72 degrees or whatever they, Fahrenheit or whatever they have this. So it's under, under perfect laboratory conditions. This panel would get 550. In some situations, it might possibly get more, but in usual outside in real, real world, it's going to get less than that. And the two panels together, then we would just add those up, and that being that would give 1,100 maximum. And I've had today in bright sun with the panels tilted just about perfectly, I hit uh, 1,000 watts. I've never come close to 1,100, and I wouldn't expect to. But 1,000 watts, and 1,000 watts is well under... The Delta Pro 1600. The 100 volts is well under the 150. The thing to remember too is that when the temperature goes down, this voltage would go up. So if you if you ever get close to your max, you have to be careful and not um, and do the math and see what would happen if uh, if the voltage goes like you know if the voltage if I got really cold like it was like 30 degrees Fahrenheit or something. I don't, I didn't do the math, but you know, maybe this would be 110 volts or 120 volts or something. And I'm still under the 150 and, and I'm never going to produce the max apps um, that the unit can handle with this, with this setup. So if I wanted to improve this, what I could do, I could try to get, I've got like 900 to a thousand Watts right now. I could try to get closer to the 1600 by going up a little bit in the voltage but still staying under the 150 or i could go up a little bit in the amperage um and, th and if i if you go over an amperage the advantage of that that is on a cloudy day you're not making 14 i wouldn't be making the max amps on a cloudy day anyway but i if i if i have this set up for like say 20 amps you know maybe i'm making 10 i'd be making five say on a cloudy day so then I'd be making 10. If you, if you combine in series, you add the voltages and use the lower amps. If you combine in parallel, you use the lower voltage and add the amps. And so what I'm going to be doing, I'm kind of playing around with some numbers, and I'm trying to decide where I might want to go next as far as more solar panels, um, how I might want to arrange it. And uh, that's... I'm not, that's not going to be anytime soon, but I just wanted to give this quick overview of, of what's going on here. Let's wrap this up by uh, looking at the, just, a, I'm not just a quick overview of the solar connector. So <clears throat> this is a solar extension cable that I got off of Amazon. It's on one end, it's got the MC, these are MC4 connectors, and that's the standard kind of connector to connect up solar panels. And you can see that on this end, they're already connected and you know one, one, one uh, cable is helpfully red and one's black, um, but if you but if you connect them correctly, you can't mess it up if if you've got you know. So basically, their at their end isn't 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 has got the connectors in it, but they're not attached yet, and I'll have to do that. There's some videos online that explain how to do that, but you can see one of these, one of these, which actually it looks male, but it's actually the female connection, the negative and then the positive. You hear, and, and these these just plug, they snap. They, you push them together until they snap. And when you get a, of course, I got to stand up. Oh, so when you get a uh, solar panel, most of them come pre-wired like these. So what you've got here is <clears throat> there's an electric, some kind of electric junction box. It's got some electronics in it here in the middle, which I don't understand. <laughs> but on then on each end, there's a there's a connection with a cable. And it's got one of the MC4 connectors on one side, and it's got the other one over here on the other side. And so to connect them in series, like I've done, what you do is you put the two panels next to each other, like here, and you take the, the positive from one and the negative from another, and you connect them here in the middle. And then what you've got is you've got on the other sides of each panel, you've got one of them, one of them which is a negative connection, 
and one is a positive connection and you bring those two together and those are the ones you run off to your 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 battery and that's pretty much all there is now if you want to do it in parallel which you would instead of connecting a positive and a negative you would connect the two positives connect and the two negatives connect and i would need a uh, there's a they sell parallel junction cables that you can get which will let you do that and then you run the a positive and a negative so these are these are in series and that's going to be it for this time i'll see you later